Jesus, that was horrible. Hey guys, more content. Um, this is not really a review, um, although I will have another one or two coming this week. Um, I want to talk about a couple of re-recordings -re re -re re -re of two massively influential records, Morbid Visions and Bestial Devastation, and the fact that they've been re-recorded. And why are they re-recorded? So the biggest thing about re-recordings always has been and always will be that, well, it takes away too much of the original. Here's the thing. If you have the original, you have the original. This is an updated version of it. And I'm going to get into the comments made by the band. And where it was re uh, recorded and mixed and all that jazz. But the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about another record where a band really caught a lot of shit for this. It's, this is sort of a sidetrack, but I, I, I'm going to get to my main points after. October 28th of 2008, my birthday. <laughs> um, Exodus released Let There Be Blood. That band caught so much shit. When they released that, because, like, oh, well, it's not Bailoff. Well, no, it was in 2008, you dum dums. And frankly, fucking Paul and Paul Bailoff had not long, had, had been gone for six years at this point. But it's Paul. You still have the fucking originals. Calm down. This is a different version. It's not taking away anything of what Paul did. But at that time in 2008, not very many people were going to be able to pick up fucking Bonded by Blood unless it was on the used market somewhere. It may or may not may or may not have been in shitty condition, and it probably would have cost you a bazillion dollars. So they re-recorded the songs, and they had fucking Rob Duke sing them. Gary has said that he wanted it to have he wanted to have a version of the album that sounded the way he wanted it to sound. The unfortunate problem is, is that at the time in fucking 1985, excuse me. They were bands were just getting to the point where they were releasing some amazing records, but Bonded by Blood was not well mixed or recorded because it was done very, very I won't say poorly, but you gotta understand at the same time it wasn't fucking the greatest ever. I mean that was done at Prairie Sound Studios in Cotati, California, and fucking you know the producer was Mark Whitaker now. Again, it's not that it was bad. It's just you have to understand it was really, really raw sounding. Now, when we go back to Morbid Visions, I had never... I'd only heard Best, uh, Bestial Dev Devastation. And that was with a friend of mine, only because I was like, whoa, I didn't realize that there was anything before Arise. I thought Arise was the debut record from Sepultura. So... These both of these re-recordings are out on Nuclear Blast, and the thing is, as Max has said, as we get harder year after year, sometimes you've got to go back to where it all started. We re-recorded Bestial Devastation and Morbid Visions with the amazing sound of now, but with its raw and timeless spirit, because you can never replace an original. Original will always be original. It's never going away. The art wreck, the art wreck, holy fuck. The artwork, now that I can fucking talk, reflects the times that we're living in right now. Apocalyptic hell. We have also, we also have two new tracks with riffs from those days remembered by heart. Which is pretty good considering that was back in the 80s. I'm lucky if I know what I fucking made the kid for lunch today. Oh yeah, it was a peanut butter sandwich. Hmm. Anywho, carry on. Igor Cavalera states... I always felt the recordings of our earlier work didn't do justice to the way we performed the songs. So, this is a very special moment in our lives that we are very proud to show you, real fans, our true representation of the amazing records, Bestial Devastation, and Morbid Visions with an insane visual identity. And that is a fucking fact. Those, these new album covers, it's just a reimagining. It's just literally... It, they're not trying to replace anything, so this is a big thing. Some people, some people just can't understand. Most people that I've seen talk about this, it's like, yeah, it's killer. I'm like, yeah, it's fucking right, it is.
but there's going to be the odd one to two percent of people that are just going to have a fucking meltdown over it because it's not the OG. Now, the thing is, both of these records were re-recorded at the Platinum Underground. They were produced by Max and Igor, while John Aquilino handled the engineering. Arthur Rizek, <laughs> what a guy that is, was responsible for the mixing and mastering of both albums. So, that's why it sounds so fucking good. Cavalier enlisted Ellerin Cantor to recreate the artwork for both albums and when he recreated these things holy shit they look absolutely fucking stunning morbid visions it's it's a sharper version of what it was same thing with uh, Dev Be uh bestial devastation it absolutely fucking rips i mean and the biggest thing is with both of these here we have to, we we have to look at things a little bit differently, and I and I understand the whole fact of yeah, well, I don't I don't want bands to go back and re-record because it's kind of dumb. Those albums from back in the day were super raw, super raw, super insane, and they were crushing, 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 crushing. The thing about now is with these re-recordings, Arthur Rizik was able to mix and master these. And John Aquilino was able to get put on such a nice engineering spin. They sound far more pissed off. Far more pissed off than they ever did. The rawness is still there because it's still soaked in reverb. When you... Max's vocals are up front. The drums are up front. The guitar tone is back a little bit. But the thing is, is it's... It's, 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 it's still, it almost sounds like it's a fuck. Cause really, when you listen to these records, they sound very black metal inspired. And, and, and the whole, the, the guitar work is alone just sounds like it could be on a brand, it could be on a fucking older black metal record. Which to me is kind of fucking baffling in this day and age that you can go back and get these very raw sort of tones in, in your, uh, in your guitar playing. It's just it's just fucking amazing. When I look at these two records and when I look at a record like uh Let There Be Blood, which I think I have somewhere here, and I don't know if I want to look for it or not, but regardless. You know, the fact of the matter still remains about these is that we've got to stop looking at re-recordings as a bad thing. Now, mind you, it depends on what band it is and depends on what record it is. So, again, like people did originally with the whole fucking Let There Be Blood thing, people were not happy about it. And, again, I understand. Rob Dukes makes it fucking sound better. That's not to say Paul was terrible, because Paul's not terrible. And this really isn't a rant. This is sort of me just like... Bleh. It, some people might find this a rant, but it's really not. The thing that I will say the most about um, these re-recordings, again, is that they are pissed off. Okay? Let to Be Blood is pissed off. It's far more pissed off. I mean, am I going to pick these out? Am I going to pick Morbid and uh, Bestial up? I hope so. I hope I'd be able to find a copy of both of them. But I may have to order from the website, which could cost me a pile of money because... You know, conversion th conversions and things are horrible. So, <laughs> and that's a that's another thing. That's like a that's a like a never ending topic. Oh, excuse me, apologies there, folks. Yeah, like the biggest thing is is if I look at the if I look at the current, so so that's cool, ish. The dollar is a little bit higher. It's seventy six cents. American. So let's say let's say um, let's say the vinyl for Morbid Visions is thirty five is a thirty five American. That's forty six dollars Canadian. So it's eleven dollars more, and then you have to put the tax on it, and then you can put the, put the shipping on it. So it's it's quite goofy. Like even if I was to order just one of those records, right off the bat, I'm going to be at least looking at eighty bucks. 
at least 80 bucks ish well no not no not really if let's say shipping's 15 bucks taxes yeah no i'll be about no it's gonna be well taxes will probably put it at about 55 and then um actually let me do this let me do this so it's kind of a side to a side sort of thing but this is this is what i want people to understand Where did that go? Let's see if it brings it up or not. Probably won't though. No, okay, that's fine. So yeah, pretty much, it pretty much it'll probably cost me about seventy-five to eighty bucks to get one of those records here. Like that's that's how bad things are right now, and why I haven't been buying very much. And it's just, it's just goofy. It's so goofy. Like, I mean, even in, even like at the start of July, it was down to like 73, 74. It was horrifying. And now it's going up slowly. And I hope it goes up because if I don't find it here locally, I'm going to have a really hard, I'm going to have a really hard time getting this on any sort of, even, even on cassette. I don't I wouldn't even care if it was CD at this point. But I would like to be able to pick up both and have them in my collection and then just kind of go from there. So anyways, guys, thank you so very much for watching. Uh, I do apologize for sort of that little side sort of thing and the computer issues and, you know, you know how it is. Um, I'm going to have a another review up here soon um, for a very good uh, friend of mine from Metal Twitter or Metal X, whatever the fuck people want to call it. I'm just... Most of us are still calling it Metal Twitter because fuck everybody up. Because fuck this X bullshit. Uh, okay, so here's a... Okay, so here's what we're going to do. One band I'm going to mention here um, that I plan on doing a review for. And it may not get done until Thursday, but I'm not sure. It depends on what I've got done Hopefully over the next two days, I'm going to be able to get a lot of my major stuff that I need to get done done. Uh, Caligram, for those of you who are into black metal, I'm going to do... Of course, if you look at the classifications, black, black and hardcore, I'm going to review a black metal record. Oh boy. This should be inter interesting and entertaining. <laughs> Anyways... If nothing else, I that will be later in the week. I do have another uh, EP that I'm going to be doing a uh, review for. Probably tomorrow or Wednesday. I hope you guys are able to check her out. Um, and hey, if you like this kind of ba babbling fucking nonsensical horse shit. <laughs> I'm going to try. I'm trying to make things a little bit more professional and less goofy. But hey, goofy is what I do best. Because, you know, at least, at least if you get a laugh out of all this. I will see you guys soon. If you again, if you like this, give her a like, hit the subscribe button. You know, maybe do the notification things that way you're not missing out on the stuff because I'm going to be doing this as often as I possibly humanly can. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, and I will see you soon.